Hello everybody, let me turn off my fan, oh no, sorry, almost forgot about it. So this time, this is my second Shifty's FP VOD of the day, I think I will stick with two today, maybe two every day. It is really difficult guys for me to process it, it does take a long time, so just bear with me. I am trying to use Sony Vegas and it is fantastic, but it is, it takes longer to compile. So anyways, uh, let's see how this is, this is a game on Lost Temple. It is a TVP, because I always play T, so the matchups are, you know, always T involved, and it's it's my FP VOD anyways, I guess. So it's always just watching me play T. This is Lost Temple, and I think this game I will go for a two barracks and see what he does, and then just counter it. Not do anything uh, too innovative, like thinking ahead already, going for three barracks marauder. I will not be doing that. Anyways, I throw down my supply depot right by his. Uh, uh, or I throw, supply, throw down my supply depot right by my geyser because that's just how I always start off with my supply depots. Because you want to put your supply depots in a place where it doesn't take up position, because now you can make it go into the ground. And if you make it go into the ground in the pathing of your command center to your geyser, well then your units will, I mean, you, it won't take up any space because you shouldn't be building there anyways or else it will be obtruding in the pathing of your SCVs while they mine gas. So, uh, I do have some shoutouts I was supposed to give. I, this is kind of already ha a little bit into the video, but shout out to Wombo Combo for expressing some interest and helping me just get more viewers. Uh, shout out to Ectoplasmic because he challenged me to 1v1 and the first guy to challenge me, and I did play him. And sorry, but you got wrecked. I'm, I'm just messing. It was it was a pretty good game. Uh, shout out to. Uh, who and all the guys who sent me replays just thank you guys for showing some interest and I am casting them so you know we have Yako Jorgen uh, base I don't remember your actual name I just know your your player name base and we have obese Hydra so thank you all of you guys for showing some interest in my channel anyways this is a very interesting game because what happens is I rarely actually get this close of positioning in with against the other Protoss player. So if you notice, we are actually right next to each other in terms of the pathing and it will allow the Protoss a very short travel time. Personally, I would not like this because if I wanted to expand, it would give me some trouble whereas for the Protoss, his units are much more mobile. Mobile. He is getting a... Uh, he is the Protoss player is getting his cybernetics after he get starts building his first Z-Lot. You could see it in the gateway it has a little circle that's kind of moving. That means units are being built. And what I do is kind of a mistake is I decide to go for a Reaper because somehow I thought that it would take him a long time for to get that first stalker up. But I don't know. So let this be a lesson to all of you. If you see the other player getting cybernetics and I mean anytime that he's getting it he is gonna be able to get that stalker up before you get your reaper into his base and do much damage because one stalkers have that incredible range against reapers they move very fast and by the time you built your reaper and get it to his base he will have constructed the first stalker so it was a waste of resources for me and I was not able to research for example combat shield immediately so that was my mistake of that game I just started off the match and I already made a mistake. So there's this stalker. I try to run away from it, but it is so easy to hit and run with stalkers that I it, that my, I didn't even get to take out one didn't even get to take out one probe and I lo already lost 50 minerals and 50 gas. So I was already behind. So just don't do it against Protoss unless the Protoss player is not going for cybernetics at all originally. If you go for two gate, by all means go for reapers because reapers you can hit and run against those zealots easily. Okay, so meanwhile, I have two gas up. I plan on getting a Ghost Academy soon, depending if I see a Robotics, but I probably will anyways, because Ghosts are just so good against any Protoss unit, regardless of whether they have Immortals or not. And I really should throw down a third Barracks, because I am going so heavily, investing so heavily in a Bio Ball, that I really need a third barracks for with a reactor to pump out those extra marines and so he tries to do a little attack and I'm pretty sure by now he can scout that I am indeed going for marauders and marines I am not going for all marauders or going for all marines I scan his base and I do see the robotics going down so immediately I throw down the ghost academy because the 
a uh, normally typically a protoss player when he goes for robotics he is going to get one observer and build immortals if he wants to get colossus that is a huge investment because if you get uh, and you, because you have to you have to research thermal lance without thermal lance colossus really aren't that effective and it costs 300 minerals per colossus and 200 for researching lance upgrades so it's not too fantastic if there's two bases for a Protoss player, then sure, but you rarely see it in a one base Protoss. So, I am still producing out of my two two barracks, and I am, my economy, my income is actually kind of low. I do not have too much money constantly, and I build a turret right in the middle of my mineral line, and it does obtrude my mining a little bit but this way you can cut down on your uh, expenditures because what you do is you build one turret there and you don't have to build anywhere else and you can cover all of your tur uh, mineral line so one turret there is going to be able to cover all of your mineral line because I feared that if he was going to go for a hidden void raid or two it would do a lot of damage because I wasn't investing heavily in marines and if he just charged up two void rays I would get destroyed so I just want that that turret to discourage him from attacking if he did get any void rays. Anyways, my army is actually really really small. I did research concussion shells and combat shield. I really need stim, but more importantly I also need a turret near that little ledge because it is very common for a Protoss player to research, oh, to, when he builds the, um, when, when he builds the Observer to stay on that ledge so he can constantly watch and I do go in for attack I snipe the immortal, but it just isn't enough. He does throw down one force field It is not very effective. It split my army in two, but not that much And if you see right now, I put my marauder on the ledge, but he is able to snipe it because he, no doubt there is a uh, He does have a observer right here So immediately I, I figured that out and I throw down I try to throw down a turret right there So I can discourage him from having a vision of that ledge and if I do decide to snipe him for example from the ledge he won't see it. Anyways, I scan his ramp because first of all, I wanted to see if he expanded at his natural. And if he did, they, oh, those are two good force fields. Almost trapped my units, but did not. They just took a little more damage, but they still managed to get away. And now I have to pull my uh, SCVs off the line to hold this off. Because if he moved up into my base, I would not be able to hold this attack off. So what I have to do is, I am going to go for the... Uh, he is going for my uh, base that I set up, and that I guess is the flaw. I didn't build it at the mineral line, but he is still being able to attack my command center, and I have to cancel it soon because he is able to pick at it constantly, and I am not able to finish building it and lift off. So I do cancel it. Uh, I think I canceled it. My minerals, uh, I don't have enough to build another one. So I just built another one there. I decided, you know, if I build it, maybe I'll float it to 11 o'clock. That's somewhere that the Protoss would never think to check. And so now I move out a little bit. I EMP the Immortal because that's the first thing you need to do. And I am using my SCVs as my shield because I am down on unit count. So I do have to use my SCVs to go and take some of the, be like a shock absorbent. And so this Immortal is going to fall because of my fantastic cu concussion shells, which I love. And so I just move straight into his base, and at the point at this time, I keep think I was still thinking that he had one base, but when I see these probes right here, I realize that he expanded at the 12 o'clock. So I decide to move my unit army there and take it out. Although honestly, I should not have done that. I should have just kept set up a few bunkers outside of his base and kept my maintain uh, set up a contain there, because even though he is getting his expansion up, it is not going to be saturated as long as I do not allow his probe transfer. So now, since I split up my army, he saw it and he moves out and he realizes that there's no, almost nothing in my base. And if he moves into my base now, he is going to be able to destroy everything I have. And while I am going for his base, he does set up two force fields, so he does kind of split my army in two. These sentries don't do much damage against marauders, but they are still very effective. He warps in three stalkers. The stalkers are going to easily be, going to be able to easily clean up my two marauders and the one marauder left behind the force field. This is a very bad game on my part. I made many, many mistakes. The biggest one of them being that I split up my army uh, by going for his choke and not going to set up like two or three bunkers right outside of his base because there I could prevent him from moving out and just get him up on my economy. Whereas when I left, I just allowed him free roam in the map again. I now have to pull my SCVs off, but I don't have any units to hold this off, especially if 
if the Protoss player added a few Zealots into the mix, he would be able to, his army would be even more effective because all ranged units are not too good. You do want to throw in some melee units for Protoss. The Zealots are very good, but that is it. Uh, there's nothing I can do. So this is good game, and it's just that that's it. It's good game. I made a couple mistakes. So this just goes to show that I am not perfect. I do make a couple or make many mistakes in the game, but just bear with me and. Um, at least I'm showing you all my games. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe.